Hello and welcome to Sensor TV. I'm Tina Jha. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak wants every student in England to study maths in some form until the age of 18. In his first speech of 2023, setting out the ambition for the better future of Britain, the Prime Minister said he expects people to have the skills needed to feel confident with finances. Especially in a world where data is everywhere and statistics underpin every job, Rishi Sunak emphasized that children's jobs will require more analytical skills than ever before. And letting them out into the world without those skills would mean letting them down. Bringing about education reforms and giving every child the highest possible standard of education has been cited as the single most important reason behind Rishi Sunak's entry into politics. But the question is, how has the idea of compulsory maths resonated among citizens? How challenging will it be for Rishi Sunak to implement this policy? Also, what is the status of maths education in other countries? That's what we discuss on this edition of the Global Debate. To discuss all of these aspects, I'm pleased to welcome on the program an illustrious panel, Dr. Thomas Hunt, Associate Professor in Psychology and Leader of the Mathematics Anxiety Research Group, University of Derby, Dr. K. N. Raghavan, Senior Professor, Mathematics Group, Institute of Mathematical Sciences, Chennai, and Mr. Stephen Westlake, Chief Executive, Royal St Statistical Society, London. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on the program today. Uh, Mr. Stephen Westlake, let me begin the program today with your thoughts on Rishi Sunak's proposal to actually make maths compulsory for every student in England until the age of 18. I think these plans are a fantastic statement of ambition. Um, as the Prime Minister said, mathematics, statistics and data are important to more and more jobs. And England has for a while been unusual among a lot of countries in that we allow people to allow pupils to drop maths as early as the age of 16. There's a lot that needs to be got right to make this proposal work, but I think it's a fantastic, ambitious idea. Okay, so we'll discuss what actually is needed uh, to make this uh, policy a success in the times to come, the challenges that it faces in just a while. Let me go across to Dr. Hunt now and understand from him the kind of response that it has generated within the country. Uh, what we gather from reports is there's a lot of criticism that is also taking place. So help us and our viewers understand what really is the entire proposal all about and the criticism that has followed. I think firstly, at the, as it stands, we don't fully know the, the details. I think this is part of why um, the initial proposal has perhaps been so, so divisive, maybe quite emotive, actually, in some instances. Um, we don't yet know what the exact proposal um, will, will, will look like in the end, other, other than the, the general principle, the ambition that, that um, children will be um, supported in maths education up to the age of 18. So I think that, that lack of detail at this um, at this early stage is perhaps causing some anxiety and, and, and some um, concern amongst um, certain people. But uh, Mr. Stephen Westlake, before I go, go across to Dr. Raghavan and understand uh, uh, his response, a very quick question on what really was the need for this policy? Uh, ha has Rishi Sunak spelt out uh, uh, the idea behind bringing such a kind of proposal? I think this is grounded very much in the way the world is changing, the way data, the way statistics are becoming more and more important, not just to what we think of as, say, scientific or technological jobs, but to everything, to the social sciences, to everyday jobs. Um, so there's an economic motive, but I think we should also accept that there is a kind of broader intellectual motive. So knowing more about maths, knowing more about statistics helps us understand the world. It helps us provide deeper and richer perspectives. This is a, um, this is a good step for the pursuit of pure learning as well as for making the UK richer and more prosperous. Dr. Raghavan, ever since Rishi Sunak has announced this proposal, internet users in India are, you know, actually uh, associating his proposal to his Indian origin as well because of the fact that mathematics in this part uh, of the world is extremely important. The, uh, you know, the, the importance that Indian parents attach to this subject and they persuade their uh, children to actually study the subject until class, eight, uh, cl class 12 is something that, that is spoken about. But uh, what is your perspective? 
perspective on Rishi Sunak's proposal number one. And if I may also ask you about the status of mathematics education in India, because it has stirred a larger debate on the importance of the subject, increasingly because of the world today driven by data. Uh, I don't know about uh, uh, Rishi Sunak's uh, Indian origins, uh, how uh, perhaps the interest in India is driven more by that than anything else. Um, we are not um, uh, comparable to the developed country, you know, to UK. Our situation, ground situation is very different from that of the UK. And uh, a, a lot of uh, this interest uh, uh, that is being shown is probably coming from uh, a certain profile of uh, Indian citizens. Uh, so, uh, I mean, talking about the proposal itself, it is, uh, as the other panelists have said, it's a very welcome proposal, but the devil is in the details and how it's going to be implemented. Uh, that's uh, where the challenge is. It's a no-brainer that uh, in this uh, world that we live in, mathematics, or math not just mathematics, but quantitative thinking uh, and statistical thinking, um, we are forced to deal with this day in and day out. And uh, engaging with this kind of thinking is very important for students to help them. And, uh, uh, and the statement was very good. I mean, letting them out without this knowledge is letting them down. Uh, that's very good, but uh, how it's going to be implemented is where it all comes down to, I think. Uh, Mr. Stian, the fact that, you know, uh, uh, the, the British Prime Minister has uh, cited data for, for, for his policy, he says about 8 million adults in the country have numeracy skills, uh, which, which is at par with students who, who are at the primary school level, the elementary school education level. And that is quite concerning in this age. Isn't that also going to be a huge challenge, the fact that you've given your population the, uh, the right to make choices, now to you know, bring in such kind of reforms, perhaps that's, that, that's what explains the criticism that this policy is witnessing? So it's definitely true that there are other issues around numeracy that the government is keen to tackle. And actually, one of the things Rishi Sunak did a few years ago when he was uh, the UK's finance minister was put in place a separate program to tackle numeracy among adults in adult education. So this is clearly something he's passionate about, not just for 16 to 18 year olds, but, but, but more broadly. Um, you're absolutely right though, this is a question, it's worth tackling it at that 16 to 18 year old age group, but it's also worth tackling it, tackling it earlier in the school age and for adults. Dr. Hunt, so since we're talking about the challenges in implementing the policy, we, we really do not know what the details are going to be, the kind of changes that it will bring about to the current education system. But the fact that in terms of acceptance among people, in terms of uh, uh, infrastructure ready, in terms of availability of teachers to fulfill this plan, uh, uh, what really do you think are going to be the roadblocks? I think one of the, the key things to consider is how maths education in the UK has remained um, fairly stable, um, you know, despite obviously certain changes within the, the curriculum, for example, from time to time, the, the, the general culture around maths has, has remained pretty stable for, for some time. And I think we, we have different generations who have gone through that maths education system who perhaps do have uh, memories, do have experiences of, of being taught maths, uh, which are going to impact, um, you know, their, their current views. So I think we, we have people of different ages who perhaps do feel very maths anxious, perhaps very low in maths confidence and, and low, um, uh, low uh, esteem around maths. Um, and I think some of those attitudes, some of those anxieties are clearly going to impact, um, you know, one's views around maths education more generally. And I think when we've had a system where, um, around half, if not more, um, of people stop maths education at the point of being 16 years of age. Um, it's quite a, a, a staggering change, I think, um, culturally, to then consider anything compulsory past that point. So I think, you know, this is, it's no wonder then that it's a, a divisive, it's an emotive um, topic. 
Um, but I think certainly um, the, the, the prevalence of, of, of maths anxiety, the, the pervasive nature of it, this is something that's going to impact people's um, views, I think both, both young and old. Uh, Dr. Raghavan, coming back to you, because you know what really happened, the challenges and how the UK prepares to adapt to this policy change if and when it happens. The larger ob objective here is, and that, that lies in Rishi Sunak's vision, that we want to ensure that our youngsters do not lag behind in this age of data and statistics. That also holds true for India, which has a large number of young population. In fact, we are the uh, youngest country in the world if you look at uh, our, our demography. So if I try to understand from you how are Indians faring in numeracy skills today, that is something wherein we, we will hold a lot of promise. So when we say demographic dividend, upskilling our youngsters in terms of numeracy is also going to be extremely important. Yeah, I, I think yes. uh, Dr. A... Raghavan. Dr. Hunt, I'll just come back to you. That question is for Dr. Raghavan. Uh, there's no question at all that this is a very important thing. That's absolutely no, I think uh, all the other panelists have said so. And uh, the, I, I think there is absolutely no question that this numeracy uh, is very important. Uh, it was always important, but it's perhaps import, more important now than at, at, at any other point. And its importance is also going to increase uh, uh, with, uh, with more digitization and uh, the way we are progressing. Uh, there is no question about that. But, uh, uh, and given that we have a very young population and uh, the jobs in India are going to need this kind of quantitative thing, thinking, not necessarily formal mathematics, as uh, uh, Professor Hunt, I think, hinted, uh, there is a lot of stability to the maths curriculum. I think maths is a subject which perhaps school maths hasn't changed much in 100 years. Uh, uh, but that's something perhaps we should look at uh, uh, to some, as something that, is, uh, that uh, we should look at to change uh, if we are to address this issue. Uh, but uh, there's no question at all that uh, uh, numeracy is an important issue and we need to address that. Absolutely. And uh, uh, it's uh, going to, uh, I, I, I'm not an expert really on uh, how, uh, where we stand. I'm a, a mathematician by training, not a, a, a person uh, who has a school education background. So I'm a, a Absolutely. That, that, that's okay, Dr. Raghavan. But the, the, but the larger point is that, you know, this is one proposal that, his, that has been made by Rishi Sunak with a larger vision in mind to help the youngsters. Uh, the, the fact is that, uh, you know, India has a legacy, a history of mathematical achievements. The question here is about uh, whether a, a similar proposal could be feasible and workable in a country like ours. Uh, w how are we teaching maths and how should we to upskill our population? Well, uh, again, these are very uh, uh, deep questions, and I'm not sure I'm competent to answer all those. Uh, uh, I can give you my personal opinion, but I'm... Sure, a, sure. It, it's I'm about a, your personal opinion, Dr. Raghavan. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure um, having it made compulsory is necessary, necessarily a, a good thing. You know, we... Will, uh, the importance of numeracy is uh, clear, but as Professor Hunt said, there is also a lot of anxiety with mathematics, and uh, we need to address that as well. And um, so there is a balance between making something compulsory. When you want to achieve something, maybe the best way to look, go about it is not, not necessarily by making it compulsory, I think. But try, trying to have options, we need to definitely help people have this opportunity to improve their numeracy, but whether to make it compulsory is the answer, that I'm not so sure. And I, 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 I think, think that, that, so. that's an interesting aspect that you've touched upon. Let me go back to Dr. Hunt to understand whether making it compulsory could lead to greater anxiety among youngsters or making it desirable could also be much more feasible and much more acceptable, Dr. Hunt. I think it's important to understand some of the, the known links between um, anxiety towards maths and a range of um, behaviours and other psychological um, constructs as well. So we know, for instance, that 
um, maths anxiety is, is clearly related to avoidance of, of maths. Um, that's in terms of further study um, and, and also any occupations or careers that might involve maths as well. So there is a, a notable proportion of the population who, who are keen, they're eager to, to give up maths education at the earliest opportunity. And I think you know this is a, a particular group of people that perhaps um, we might need to target, not just in terms of um, maths education more broadly, but in terms of the, the psychological aspects um, of that avoidance as well. I think it's it's generally agreed, you know, maths is an important um, subject, and I think that the history we have in terms of the way it's been taught has has greatly impacted maybe some of the attitudes um, that, that we currently have as well. So the nature of of maths as a seen as a distinct as a separate subject, for example, um, I think that that sort of um, contributes to the idea that it's it, it's not relatable to, to real life it's perhaps not um, relatable to to, to um, other other subjects as well so I think we, we need to reimagine maths education as the, the prime minister has, has quite rightly said um, and 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 as our, our colleague has just said as well the devil is in the detail in terms of what that further maths is is going to look like and I think the biggest fear amongst many people is that it's a continuation of, of GCSE mathematics as, as we have in the UK and uh, that people will just be expected to, to do more of the same really so I think um, it will be interesting to see um, some more detail there around that policy uh, in terms of the relevance of, of maths, you know, what, what this will actually look like in practice um, for, for people and, and how they might um, view it as, as being relevant to them. I think that's the key thing, really, um, the, the relevance to the workplace, the relevance to them as an individual, um, rather than necessarily being forced to, to do more of the same of, of what they're used to. And, you know, since you spoke about anxiety uh, towards maths, uh, Dr. Hunt, one question that I would like you to uh, uh, answer for the benefit of a large section of viewers, and which includes me as well, because as someone who studied uh, maths till 16, I, I would confess that uh, perhaps I had anxiety towards numeracy because of the manner in which it, is, it was taught. So how is it in, in, in the UK? Is the anxiety level among students because of the fact that uh, they, there aren't uh, teachers of that uh, you know, uh, capability that one would expect? Or is it the infrastructure? Or is it the manner in which it is taught? Or is it just the anxiety towards numbers? What really is the larger factor that you see behind uh, you know, a large number of students not opting for mathematics beyond 16 years of age? I think it's a, it's a very... Um important question and I think mathematics anxiety is actually quite broad it sounds very specific in nature but um, what causes that that anxiety I think can can be you know many things many different things that could be the the experience that a, a pupil has uh, within the classroom so it may be um, anxiety being displayed by the teacher it may be a very stressful experience that they've had at a, a young age that, that lasts with them for, for some time but it can also be outside of the classroom as well it's not all about you know what happens within that kind of formal educational context so I think if we if we talk about um, attitudes and anxieties at a cultural level you know people will often talk about this kind of almost badge of honor um, uh, amongst some people, this shared identity almost, um, if if you are perhaps poor in maths, um, it's kind of often seen as, as acceptable in a way that you wouldn't see that with, with other subjects. So, but I think certainly within the classroom, um, things like um, peer pressure, um, a sense or expectations around um, performance um, certainly play a part. Um, and, and often testing as well is a big factor, this sense of evaluation or fear of evaluation around mathematics. And um, this is something that is extremely anxiety provoke, provoking for many people. So I think when we move forward in terms of what this new policy will look like, I think the way in which maths um, may be assessed is, is going to be absolutely vital to people's sense of anxiety. Uh, Mr. Westley, coming back to you now to understand how it's going to be implemented, whether the UK is ready for this kind of reform, how long will it take uh, to actually implement it and make it into a reality? And for that, what are the kind of areas that would need focus from the government? So in terms of in investment, in terms of increasing the number of teachers, because what I gather from the reports, the level of teachers in the UK is also worrying. Uh, worrying. 
That's absolutely right. So, in fact, this is something that people in the background have been looking at for several years. How could we make this possible? There was a report five years ago by a former president of the Royal Statistical Society, Professor Adrian Smith, that said, what would we need to do to teach maths up to 18 to everyone? And the biggest thing that we need to get right is we need to train more maths teachers. So the Royal Statistical Society and other organizations currently give bursaries. We fund students to, uh, to become maths teachers. Um, we would need to scale those kind of programs up, which would require more spending by government. One issue that's been discussed is whether we should pay maths teachers more, another way of getting more maths teachers into the workforce. There are tricky workforce issues with doing that, but that would be another important day. That's probably the biggest issue. The second issue, which is, 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 is soluble, but is also tricky, is the question of how do you find room in the curriculum? How do you find time in people's days for them to do maths in a system like the UK where people post the age of 16 who stay in academic study narrow down to three or four subjects. So we will need to think carefully about that. These aren't problems that can't be fixed, but the teaching problem will require spending more money and the curriculum problem will require some thought. So this will take, I would guess, a few years to, 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 to become reality. But from that point of view, I'm positive. I'm, I'm glad that we are starting to think about this now. Certainly. So let's see how that works out in your country. But Dr. Hunt, uh, one area which is also concerning is, and, and this the numbers suggest is, that the amount of graduates training to be teachers in England has also slumped to catastrophic levels. Just around 29,000 graduates signed up this year, which is a 20% fall compared to the 36,000 number that was last year. What explains that? Is it again, among students, we can say it's anxiety towards maths, but what about the amount of graduates training to be teachers that number coming down, why is that happening? Um, I have to say that's an area that I'm, I'm not um, particularly knowledgeable about, but I think certainly in terms of um, um, the teaching of maths, evidence is there that, that there are um, plenty of teachers who experience anxiety around teaching maths, they experience uh, very low levels of confidence around, around teaching maths. So I think certainly um, when we look at primary school level, um, this is a, a, a notable issue. Um, I think when we look at uh, secondary school level, um, again, the data are very clear there that um, we don't have the, um, the level of expertise um, to teach maths um, as it's needed. So, um, but I think certainly the extent to which that um, impacts um, people's intentions to, to train to be teachers, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure it, it, it plays a part. Um, but in terms of the general um, um, intentions to, to train to teach. I think there are probably plenty of wider issues that, that play a part there. Okay, Dr. Raghavan, I'll take one last question from you. And this is about, you know, in India, when we talk about bringing about transformations, we say we must adopt good practices. Herein, the Prime Minister of Britain talks about, you know, uh, he is in fact outlining a good vision that we could also implement for our younger generation. The fact here is that Rishi Sunak wants people of his country to be very confident with finances. In order to make our population also confident with finances, with data science, without actually making mathematics compulsory, is there anything else that, 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 that can be done? Not just for youngsters, but for the larger population also. So we are confident with numbers, we are confident with our own finances, with mortgaging a lot of our uh, things which requires numbers. Yeah. How, how can we deal with it without actually making maths compulsory until 18? Uh, okay, since you have uh, given me the freedom to give my personal opinion, I'll, I'll let myself go. Um, so uh, it's uh, this problem of uh, teachers uh, is uh, there in India as well, perhaps more pronounced than in other parts of the world. Uh, we probably should look at, uh, at this creatively. I don't think it's possible for us to train teachers. I think the, uh, the numbers are uh, too stark. The, uh, the problem is too big. So we should probably look at uh, something like the Swayam portal, that is the NPTEL portal. And I don't know if school uh, mathematics is being taught on such portals. We should probably do something there. And we should definitely not uh, have this model of one size fits all. Uh, right. CBSE, I think, for the last few years has had two levels of mathematics uh, in its uh, 11th, 11th and 12th standard higher secondary education. Uh, perhaps we should have more options for uh, students 
and uh, uh, the, you know we should think about this uh, uh, creatively and uh, uh, use the uh, digital uh, platforms to um, try and see how we can uh, make uh, uh, make people uh, numerically better educated. Right. I think the bottom line is to help people navigate the new world. And for that, if we have to incorporate and bring about changes, so be it. So let's see how Rishi Sunak actually brings about this proposal and manages to implement it in his country. And maybe then the other countries can adopt the same. With that, I'll have to wind up the program. Thank you once again, gentlemen, for joining me on this edition of the Global Debate and putting across your views and your perspectives before us and our viewers. Absolute pleasure to have you three on this edition of the program. And to you viewers, thank you very much for your time. I'll see you same time next week now. Take good care of yourselves. Keep watching Sunset TV.